decision. They're both slightly stilted. They're both slightly uncomfortable. They both sort of don't do particularly well in sort of public speaking. But, and this is the big but, Rishi Sunak's party is massively unpopular here in the United Kingdom for two reasons. One, because of what Boris Johnson did having parties during COVID. Two, because of what Liz Truss did with her mini budget that many people think crashed the economy. And so, however lacklustre Keir Starmer is, his party is miles ahead. And because of what Sunak's had to deal with, his own personal ratings are far behind those of Keir Starmer. When you see quotes or, or hear other commentators talk about a potential extinction event, as they've put it, for the Conservatives or a complete wipeout, they're talking about more than, than Rishi Sunak there. What do you make of those assessments? Well, we've become very familiar in the UK recently with a bit of sort of Canadian political history, not to mention, uh, so basically your election of 1993. Uh, I find it very, very hard to believe that we'll get that sort of scale of defeat for the Conservative Party. Partly because they were so far ahead last time, Labour have to do enormously well even to get a small majority. Most people, I think, expect the polls to narrow when polling isn't a question of how much do you like the Prime Minister, but how much do you want the other guy to be in charge. The polls tend to narrow coming up to elections. So I think that the, the, the sort of median expectation is the Conservatives will lose. Labour will get a significant majority, but it won't be wipeout territory. When you look ahead to the, the next six weeks of this campaign, and given what you've said about the lack of broader support for Sunak within his own party, that, that some people feel he's accepting defeat here, what, is that, what does that political fight look like, if that's how it's starting? Well, I think there are interesting issues here, one of which is the Conservative Party has to de decide on a manifesto on which to stand. And the Conservative Party is so profoundly divided between people who are economic left-wing, people who are more economically uh, right-wing, between sort of culture warriors and people who are more centrist, that it might well be that they find it hard to d decide on a manifesto they can all agree on. But the one thing we saw recently in this country in our local elections, which was interesting, was a number of Tory councillors basically stood for election without mentioning the Prime Minister or the party. And I suspect that for many MPs, the way to approach these elections will be not to mention the Conservatives, which is an unpopular brand, and not to talk about Rishi Sunak, who is also quite an unpopular brand at the moment. What about the, the potential for other parties uh, at the Liberal Democrats, Reform UK? What kind of a role do you see them playing potentially here? Well, with the Liberal Democrats, they had an awful time in 2019. So one expects them to do better this time. Realistically, I think we're thinking in the range of between 20 or 30 seats. So an improvement, but not a sort of stellar performance. The Lib Dems tend to do well when Labour do well. So they're going to improve their performance, I think. Reform UK, the successor of the Brexit Party, who were the successor of UKIP, led by Nigel Farage, uh, they're polling in the sort of low double figures. They haven't quite managed to achieve in real votes what they've been polling in by-elections. But the thing about Reform UK is, where they stand, they will take votes away from the Conservatives. So Reform UK will not win any seats themselves, but they could increase the scale of the Conservative defeat. The last count, I believe, six prime ministers in, in eight years. Uh, what does that suggest? What should that suggest about the state of your country? <laughs> Do you remember the days when everyone thought the UK was stable and boring and pragmatic? Well, they've long gone. I think we've had a remarkable decade, a decade that started with the Scottish referendum in 2014, went via a general election, via the Brexit referendum. And that Brexit referendum is key because it helped to, in a sense, redraw the lines of party competition and in a sense emerging out of brexit having left the european union we've now been facing a cost of living crisis that has kind of redrawn those party lines back again we've been through a, pre a, a period of immense political instability both in terms of elections and within parties which is why the conservatives have kept changing their leader I think in the event that Keir Starmer wins the election, we will see a period of relative stability thereafter because Labour is far less divided than the Conservative Party and Brexit to an extent has faded away from the public consciousness.